Here I am at the corner of Maine and Church in Lake City, South Carolina. And this spot here, I believe, is where the original post office that was built in 1848 was burnt down to the ground around 1898 or 1899. Something kind of important I almost left out, and that's what I'm afraid of when I don't script something this big and this important. In 1918, they actually built a church here. It was an AME church. For those of y'all who don't know, that's kind of a black congregation, African Methodist Episcopal. And the pastor of that church was a pastor and a lawyer. He was pretty well a big shot in the civil rights movement. He initiated the lawsuits that initially um, had segregation overturned. His name was Joseph Delane. You can look him up. You'll find out he was pretty well a big shot. Well, or attitudes at the time here, he was a bit uppity and needed to be taken care of. So they shot at him. He actually shot back and then fled up to New York where he stayed for a while anyway. But before then, they burnt the church down. So on this, on this site stood an old school house, which became a house, which became a post office, which was burnt down. And then in 1918, a church was built. In 1955, it was burnt down. I don't think anybody else put anything here. Lake City is a nice town with pretty restaurants. It's a little town, nice restaurants, good places to eat. Nice people, polite people. I've met people here that are just as friendly as they could be, uh, black or white, really doesn't matter. Now I'm on kind of a busy road here, so I'm, I'm hoping the uh, noise doesn't distract you so much. I normally don't do videos on busy roads. Anyway, at one time, however, in the South and in the North, there was resistance to the black man being put in good positions. A terrible, terrible thing took place pretty much right here on this spot in 1898. And this is that story. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to know more about this and see my other videos, subscribe and when you hit subscribe there'll be a bell show if you click that bell you'll be notified of my future videos thank you benjamin frazier baker well, february 2nd 1898 was a cold night one that turned into terror resulting in two deaths and three gunshot injuries from the baker family now benjamin frazier baker was from effingham south carolina he was a teacher <clears throat> born 1855 so he was born into slavery and then he was made a postmaster and that's what caused him all this trouble that and the attitude surrounding that promotion Lavinia Russell was his wife born in 1861 by 1898 they had nine children of which only six had survived their children ranged in ages from 18 down to one so <clears throat> President McKinley's administration assigned high positions of government um, to black men in the South. Uh, this was a provocation. I don't know if he meant it to be, but a lot of black people suffered because of it. Now I'm not blaming McKinley for the actions of people here. I'm just saying what led up to this. Late in 1897, Mr. Frazier, Benjamin Frazier Baker, uh, from here on, we'll call him Fraser Baker because Fraser is what he went by, was assigned to the Lake City Post Office as its postmaster, the first black postmaster in Lake City. People here were outraged. They were not happy about this at all, and they pretty much wasn't having it. He had, uh, he cut down the deliveries because they used to do it three times a day to one time a day because of the harassment that he was getting and the threats that he was getting. They burnt down the first post office, which I just showed you downtown. We're about a mile away from there, close to a mile, not quite. Now he asked for, okay, first off, the town filed grievances with the people above him, said he's lazy and he's no good and this, that, and the other. An investigation was done and they found that there was no merit to that at all. Then he, said, hey, these people don't like me. I, I'm afraid they're gonna you know, hurt me really bad, if not, maybe even kill me. But it was ignored. Now I know nowadays, if something like that happens, they're either gonna pull you, fix the situation, here comes a semi-truck, or give you troops to help you just depending on the situation. 
But with them, I think they just said, no, nah, it's good, you'll be all right, don't worry about it. Well, Mr. Frazier and his family lived on a house on this property, an old frame house that had originally been a schoolhouse, and then it became his house. Uh, I'm assuming that he rented it. And um, then he moved the post office to down here because the one downtown got burnt down. Oops. Now what happened? On February 2nd, 1898 the Baker family went to sleep like I said it's a very cold night they woke up in the night to their house being on fire they gathered up the kids went to run out 11 year old son Lincoln was one of the first ones out the door I assume and he got shot he was shot in the abdomen and in the arm and it broke his arm also shot was the baby that Miss Lavinia Baker was carrying the shot, it killed the baby, blew the baby out of her arms and broke her arm also and injured her. By the way, the little baby's name was Julia. So it, that killed the baby and injured Lavinia and uh, the boy. Um, so Fraser Baker was infuriated and you know, slung open the door, not a smart move. And he was shot down immediately. So then back into the house he went. He was killed and the baby was killed, but it didn't end there. Lavinia gathered the rest of the children, five of them, and managed to escape. Two of her other daughters got shot in the process. So basically, the way I read the newspaper articles is that they caught the house on fire in the back. People were supposed to come running out the front door. They were gonna shoot them down. I guess they went back through the back, through the fire, and went out the back and I don't know if there's a back door then or just back windows, but they got out. A brunt of the people that were gonna be shooting at them was in front, not in the back, but there were a couple back there and they gave chase and they shot two of the daughters, but did not kill them. Now, they hid in a field. I'm assuming it says cross the street. They went out the back. I'm assuming it was a back field back there. I don't think they would hide in a field right where the people were. They'd have to go through them. So that, I don't think that happened. They hid in a field until everything had passed. Now, the house was burnt down completely, completely burnt down. And the newspaper account said that Fraser Baker and his daughter, Julia Baker, were burnt to a crisp. They were very expressive in the language of the news back in them days. <clears throat> so I'm gonna tell you what happened with the family immediately thereafter. I'm also gonna name the accused perpetrators. And I'm using the word accused uh, because I'm not sure they all were guilty. I know two were guilty because they confessed and turned state's evidence in which they gathered their reward money and they were set free. As part of the plea bargain, they're like, we're not gonna hold you to guilty. We need you to give us evidence. And that, that's what two of them did. So I know two of them are guilty. And I'll, I'll tell more about that later. So in the family, 42-year-old Fraser Baker was killed by gunfire and, like I said, burnt. Lavinia Baker was shot in the arm. Rosa, the daughter, 18 years old, by the way, Lavinia was 37, was uh, got a broken arm by a gunshot. Cora, who was 14, was shot in the right hand. Lincoln, the 11-year-old boy that initially opened the door, he was shot in the abdomen. He was gut shot. That is a hard shot to take right there. And his arm was broken. Sarah, who was seven, and Willie, who was five. Neither one of them were harmed. And then Julia, the little baby, of course, was shot and burnt in the house. So at this point, I'm just going to wing it until I get to who the perpetrators were. <clears throat> So they hid out here in town for three days. And then the, there's a historical church in Charleston where a mass shooting took place a few, year ago, a few years ago. Emmanuel AME Church took up a collection and moved them to Charleston for a while, which it ended up, that's what a trial was anyway. So that worked out pretty good for them. Then eventually they were moved to Boston. They were moved to Boston or just outside of Boston, Massachusetts. And that's where they lived at for many, many years. Unfortunately, she didn't lost one child, 
to being shot. She lost three children earlier on before all this happened. And then while in Massachusetts, three of her children died from TB. And that would be, um, and that's from the eight, um, 1808, I think they said, to 1920. And that would have been Cora, a 14 year old girl at the time of the incident. That would have been Lincoln, the boy that was got sh gut shot, and Willie. Uh, he was one that was unharmed. And they died from tuberculosis, what was called consumption back then. So Lavinia spent most of the rest of her life there um, with her daughter, her daughter Rosa. She was the 18 year old at the time. She died in 1942 at the age of 62, but she never got married, never had any children. And so, and Lavinia died in 1947. So she ended up losing all of her kids by the time she died, most of them long before then. Then she moved back down to South Carolina. Uh, when she got old, she moved back to South Carolina. This is where she died at, about 25 miles from here, and was buried in a graveyard in Cartersville, South Carolina, it's just a crossroads. And from what I can tell, there is no grave marker there for her. Uh, according to Find a Grave, which should have all the grave markers in the cemetery listed, uh, it's listed her as being there, but no grave marker. And I just, I just don't, I got a strong sense of justice. I feel like she needs a grave marker. I don't know, maybe people with more money, more ability to organize whatever can, can get that to happen. Lavinia Baker needs a grave marker. Also, some time ago, Senator Clyburn and some other people got together, did a big ceremony downtown at the post office and renamed the post office, the Fraser Baker Post Office. I don't see the Baker name on the outside of the building, but on the inside there is something. So it just might be that it's against federal law to put anything other than post office on the front of the building. I'm willing to give them the benefit of the doubt. So who were the accused? Now we'll let you know this. I'm gonna go ahead and tell who they were and I'm gonna give a little bit of their circumstances, but I hope to do enough research to do a follow-up video to this to see what happened to them afterwards. Because what happened was at the court, even though there was strong evidence and the witnesses perjured themselves to provide uh, alibis for those accused, it was a hung jury. It was deadlocked. A mistrial was declared, but another trial was not done. In justice. Who are the accused? Notice I'm not saying guilty. Who are the accused? Four of them were National Guardsmen, South Carolina National Guardsmen from the Manning, South Carolina Post. The accused were Alonzo Rogers, Charles D. Joyner, who was a member of the National Guard, Ezra McKnight, who it said is the one that actually killed Mr. Baker, Henry Goodwin, Henry Stokes, who was considered the ringleader, the agitator, Marion Clark, Martin Ward, Moultrie Epps, Oscar Kelly, also in the National Guard. By the way, Marion Clark was also in the National Guard. W.A. Webster, Joseph P. Newham, and Early P. Lee. Now these are the two that were state witnesses. Of their guilt, I am 100% sure of, because they said so. As a matter of fact, Joseph P. Newham, it said in the newspaper, showed no remorse at all whatsoever. And maybe it's because he knew he wasn't gonna be found guilty. I've been reading some of these people, what I can of them so far, they had pretty arrogant attitudes. Now it could be that maybe one or two were not guilty, but I think in the place where they lived and the security that they had, surrounding them for what they did wrong, they were very arrogant. 